Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can use your iPad as an external monitor for your Mac. So first of all, what you're going to have to do is open up the App Store on your iPad and download this simple application called iDisplay. And it's $4.99 in the App Store, relatively cheap for what it does. Once you download that, you're going to need to head over to your Mac and go to shapeservices.com slash iDisplay. And what you need to do here is you're going to need to download the desktop version of the software for Mac OS, which is the link right here. And you need two things running. So you need the client running on your computer as well as your iPad to make them run together. So you're going to download whatever version you need to, um, either for Leopard or Snow Leopard. It works with both. And then you're going to need to install iDisplay. So just run the installer, and it's a pretty simple process. Now, when you install it, it's going to warn you that after you finish installing the software, you're going to have to restart your computer. So once it finishes up, I'll restart the computer and I'll be right back. So now I've rebooted my computer, and now I can go into my Applications folder, and you'll see iDisplay right here, and I can open this up. And it's nothing comes up on the screen right away. Uh, it just lives in your menu bar, and you can see it just gives you a menu right here. And it's running, and that's all there is to it. You don't have to worry about it or you know, configure anything. It's really a, a quite simple app once you know how to use it. So the next thing you have to do is go over to your iPad and then run the iDisplay app that's on your iPad. So I'll just open it up here. And you can see on my iMac screen now, unknown device is attempting to connect to iDisplay on this computer. And it says MS iPad. I can allow this. I could deny it or I could always allow it. So I'm going to always allow it because I probably want to connect more than once. And now you can see my Mac you know, adjusted its display and my iPad is acting as an external display. So now what I can do is I can go up and look at the iDisplay menu and you can see it's yellow now indicating that there's a display attached. And I can click Organize Displays. And it's going to open up System Preferences and show me the display panel. And now you'll see that there is three displays attached that it shows. And you can see on my iPad there is a display now um, attached. So I'm going to click Gather All Windows and I'm going to bring them all back over here onto the Mac. And I'm going to set this up so that everything is configured how it should be. So if you look here, you can see on my Mac I have the displays arranged how they are currently. So you can see I have my IMAX monitor, followed by my secondary display that's connected to my computer, and then right here my iPad. So right now my iPad is resting right below my iMac, so I can just move it over here. And it's about right there, so I can just set it like that. And now you can see my dock is actually on my iPad because of the relation to where it is into my Mac and it's directly underneath. So it's acting as the dock space. And you can see I can drag windows onto the iPad and drag them off. And it's a little bit laggy because it relies heavily on the speed of your network connection. Um, so it's a little bit choppy. And Obviously, the faster network you have, the faster it'll go. Um, but it's usable. Now, it's not something you're going to want to play video on. Because of the refresh rate, it would look pretty bad. Uh, but it's perfect for running something like a Twitter client. So you can see I've brought Twitter over here. And it can just sit here and provide me with updates. And it's very useful for something like that. Or perhaps if you have an iTunes you know, uh, thing set up and you want it to have it open and active but you don't want it to be taking up a space on your main display. Um, so, you know, not good for video type things, uh, but it is good uh, for things that you just kind of want to keep track of, uh, little applications like that. And I should also mention that just like any other external display, you can also change the desktop of it. You can see I can choose any desktop I want. Now it's set just like my other monitors are, and uh, it looks just like you'd expect it to. So a couple things about iDisplay. It's not going to re replace your main monitor by any means, and that's obvious because it's supposed to be a secondary monitor. Uh, and if you have a secondary monitor hooked up, 
it's probably not going to replace that either just because of the slow refresh rate. Um, but it is good, like I mentioned, for things like a Twitter feed or iTunes or things like that. And it really does open up a, a new world of possibilities uh, for your iPad. For example, I can't drive three monitors with my iMac. Now with this, I can. I can have two external displays plus my main one. While maybe not as useful and definitely not as big as a regular external monitor would be, it gives me that added functionality that I can really take advantage of if I do things like that. Um, if you had Photoshop and you have a lot of different windows open, you could store some of them on here just for quick, easy access. Uh, just another example. There really are a lot of endless possibilities with this, and it works on your iPhone as well. Um, probably even a little bit less useful, but still a, a very cool application. And at you know, only $5, it works pretty well. And it's very simple and easy to set up, as I've showed you here. And that's really all there is to it. I haven't had any issues with this, and as updates come out, uh, the speed of it continues to get faster. It used to be quite a bit slower. Um, it's improved greatly from what it used to be like, and it seems to be just getting better and better along as it goes. So, so that's about all. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.